Hey, YouTube. Um, ch chiming in on the monumental loss of Eddie Van Halen yesterday. Really sad. He was he was too young. I when I when I was in high school, Van Halen was the big thing. You know, uh, their videos came out, and the premiere was always a big deal. I remember uh, seeing those Van Halen videos for the first time, and you wouldn't have to wait very long to see it again because 15 minutes later. Uh, they play it again on MTV, and everyone was waiting to see it. <laughs> uh, David Lee Roth, frontman of all time, perhaps. I mean, it wasn't really my thing. You know, I was really into Pink Floyd, and uh, as a little different thing. But as a cartoon, comic book type of 80s extremist thing, Van Halen was at the cream of the crop. And obviously, Eddie Van Halen, I, you could just go on and on about uh, what he brought to the table, how he raised the bar. Guy like me, missing fingers, not really that talented. I got to really work to earn a little bit. A guy like Eddie, it's just going to make me feel resentful. <laughs> I'm just going to feel like, why couldn't it have been me that had a little bit of that talent, you know? Uh, so that's how I feel about uh, him. I think that no one could uh, fathom his contribution to music. That like making that tapping thing okay, like it was around before that and jazz musicians, some jazz guys knew about that technique and it was considered obscene. You were not allowed to do that. And you think of even that one thing bringing tapping to the table Mind you, there was other people that were doing it. People are like, he invented it. Well, he didn't invent it, but he was so good at it that it became a thing that a lot of people did to try to copy him. And you, you can say uh, what you want about uh, them, you know, Van Halen and them getting into fights and this and that and Sammy coming in and the music change. But you can't, you can't, certainly can't take away from the fact that Eddie Van Halen was a musician in every sense of the word, and he really worked uh, very hard to establish quite a musical legacy for himself and his family name. So it's sad. He's 65. The guy had a son. It's just sad, I, you know. And I, I, I don't want to offend anyone by this. Don't miss the point, but. I much rather would have seen Eddie Van Halen clean up and, and get rid of those habits when he when he first married his first wife. All that uh, 90s stuff, the motivational lyrics that Sammy Hagar was writing about positivity and going for it, being at the top of the world, greatness and relationships and all things. All of that stuff meant nothing if you're strung out, if you're just a horrible alcoholic and you're chain smoking. But at the same time, I've got to think, you know, what were the pressures on a guy like Eddie Van Halen? I can't, I can't, I can't put myself in that. You look at the, the photograph that David Lee Roth put up, it says, what a great trip it's been. And it's, uh, it's a picture of uh, Eddie grasping David's hand and he's got the thumbs up and he's uh, he's got the body of an 18 year old Eddie Van Halen and this this is like 2009 or something 2014 somewhere in there so you gotta think how, how, how easy would it be living that lifestyle you know you gotta be rail thin you're on. How easy would it be to put the cigarettes down and whatever else? So that's something to think about. If you're not a professional touring musician with this, you know, supporting an army of people working for you, uh, and you don't have this type of pressure in your life, I, you know, my, my, my thing is just saying this. If you're struggling with addiction or if you've got something in your life that you know, you, ha you have to stop doing it or it's going to take you out. Smoking. Smoking's a perfect example. Don't, don't, uh, don't put it off. 
take a lesson from what happened yesterday. Take heed from Eddie Van Halen. He came around uh, after he, the cancer came back and he was saying, well, I remember him saying that he caught a lesionous tumor out of his tongue himself. I remember him saying that it wasn't cigarettes, that it was a metal pick. He plays with a metal pick and he'll put it in his mouth to do the tapping. And he said, that's why I got cancer in my mouth is from the metal pick. Well, how did the cancer get in your lungs? Because if you read what Valerie Bertinelli, his wife, what her quote was when he passed away, she said, you were so brave through your lung cancer treatments. And I guess she really bonded with their son, Wolfgang. She calls herself Wolfie's mom. She's like, you gave me the greatest light in my life that was Wolfgang. So it, it, it sucks. The guy had, you know, he had two wives. One, I think he remarried. And he had this son. And he's gone. He's 65 years old and he's gone. Way too soon. And you can't take anything away from this guy. He was a musician. He was a uh, greatest musician, greatest rock musician. He set a precedent. He set the bar so unbelievably high. He wrote so much music. He worked so hard. And at, at looking at it from that angle, it's hard to fault him. It's hard to think, why didn't you quit smoking? Well, he probably didn't quit. He probably didn't quit smoking because it's really hard to do, and having all this pressure on him. Number one, you got to be real thin if you're a musician. You have to look like a pirate or a pimp. And that's that's all that type of stuff that it doesn't fit in with my... What defines music to me, rock and roll. I, I mean, I get it. Like Vince Taylor, uh, the Rolling Stones, I get that. But as, as the world changes and kind of rethinks where it may have went wrong. We see all this social change. It wouldn't hurt to make some change in, in rock and roll either, where it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. You don't, you don't have to be a heroin addict to be great. You don't have to look bulimic to be a rock star. And if you're, if, you're, if you're addicted to something, the list of excuses and the list of reasons and the, it nev that never ends. That's infinite, okay? What has a number on it is the times that you get to try to get your stuff together and quit. So use this as... You know, to, don't don't take it in stride and don't miss the point when we lost Eddie Van Halen at 65. Understand that he would still be alive if, when he married Valerie Bertinelli, he said to himself, you know what? Forget all these drugs, all this hard liquor and these cigarettes. I'm going to get my act together over the next couple of years. And if that means I have to put the band on hiatus... I put the band on hiatus, but I'm going to get healthy and I'm going to live differently. And that'll give you something to write about. And it'll give you something to feel good about. Because what I saw in Eddie Van Halen, yes, he was a musical genius, uh, ta incredibly talented, uh, very smart guy. He knew how to achieve his goals even when he didn't have many resources. He built that guitar and got his sound and figured it all out. Uh, and people have been chasing after that sound ever since then. So the one thing that the guy couldn't figure out was how to save his own life. And, and that was, he probably couldn't even fathom it in, in that capacity, being Eddie Van Halen, being that guy, that rock star, the greatest guitar player, how is he going to figure out how to get himself clean and sober and get off the, get off the shit, get off the cigarettes? 
Because I'll tell you what, the, the, the cocaine and the alcohol, the hard alcohol, that stuff really messes you up. What's, and, and it's hard to get off, but what's really hard to get off are those cigarettes. So if you're a smoker, how I quit, I vaped. And when I vaped, I did not smoke. I switched over from smoking to vaping. And you need to have a good device that will really blow a lot of vapor. You can't have a little thing or something you buy at the drugstore. You gotta get a real vape device with enough nicotine in the liquid for you to switch over and not lose your mind in the process of switching over because once you buy that stuff and start vaping, you don't smoke anymore, never again. And then you vape for one year. And as you're going along vaping, you lower the nicotine level by a half a milligram a month. I went from three milligrams to zero milligrams and I didn't notice it. I did not notice it. And by the time I was at zero, I put the vape down and I haven't missed it. And I had quit nine times. I had quit smoking cigarettes nine times. And every time I had come back and smoked again because I couldn't get it out of my head. It drove me completely batty to have another cigarette. I had to have it, I had to have it. And then I would do something stupid, I would get, get a little bit alcohol in me, or I would get angry, I'd get into a fight with my wife, some stupid, I, I remember drilling, and the drill bit went through and went into my finger. Drill, a puncture wound, really hurt. I said, F this, I jumped in the car, drove to the gas station and bought, bought a pack of cigarettes. And then I smoked again for another how many years, which cost me how much money and is it, is it going to be all of a sudden I find out I, gotta, I, I get emphysema later? You know, I don't know. I don't know. I know my throat is still messed up from it. So that smoking is a horrible, horrible, filthy, stinking, expensive habit. And I would really urge anyone who is smoking store-bought cigarettes you got to get off of it it's going to kill you and that's what i took away from eddie van halen's death because he was in denial and what killed eddie van halen was not his pick in his mouth it was philip j morris all right you guys don't hate the messenger peace